Okay, welcome back. This is video two of lesson 5.2, and we're going to pick up here and talk about end behavior as we go into graphing polynomial functions. All right, polynomial functions have two ends, the left end and the right end, and that's how you need to think of them, left end, right end. The end behavior of a function's graph is the behavior of the graph as x approaches positive infinity, goes to the far right, so that's going to be your right end, or negative infinity, which means it goes to the far left, which is going to be your left end. Now, we're going to talk about the end behavior of polynomial functions in this little um, chart, and then we're going to look at actual um, representative graphs. So for the graph of, and there we've got our generic polynomial function, if a n is greater than zero, so if your leading, co uh, leading coefficient is positive and n is odd, okay, so the exponent, the degree, is odd, then f of x goes to negative infinity. It goes down as x goes to negative infinity. So as we go to the left, so it goes down as we go to the left. And f of x goes to positive infinity, which is up as x goes to positive infinity as we go to the far right. So it goes down to the left and up to the right. If we still have an odd exponent, so something like x cubed, but this time we have a negative coefficient, then f of x goes to positive infinity as x goes to negative infinity. So it goes up to the left and f of x goes to negative infinity as x goes to positive infinity. So it goes down to the right. Okay, so when n is odd, the directions, the, the two ends are going to go in opposite directions. One end is going to go up and one end is going to go down, and it depends on whether you have a positive coefficient or a negative coefficient. Okay, now when n is even, so when you have a leading uh, exponent, your degree is something like 2 or 4 or 6 or 8, then both ends are going to go in the same direction. If a n, if your leading coefficient is positive, if it's greater than 0, then both ends are going to go up. Okay, so f of x is going to go to positive infinity as x goes to negative infinity. So your graph will go up as you go to the far left. And f of x will go to positive infinity as x goes to positive infinity. So it's going to go up as you go to the far right. And this is just like a quadratic function because it has a degree of 2, an even degree, and when a is positive. Okay, remember it looked, those little parabolas looked like they were smiling at you? Okay, because both ends were going up on that parabola. So when it's negative, when you have an even degreed polynomial, just like when you have an, uh, a quadratic where a is negative, it's going to look like it's frowning at you. So both ends are going to go down. The left end is going to go down and the right end is going to go down. Oops, let's go back. And so that means f of x goes to negative infinity because that means your graph goes down as x goes to negative infinity. So it's going to go down to the left. And f of x goes to negative infinity as x goes to positive infinity. So it's going to go down to the right. And so it's going to be frowning at you. So let's look at pictures because pictures make a lot more sense to me than um, just writing it out like that. All right, so here we've got a polynomial with an odd degree. When the leading coefficient is positive, it's going to go up to the right. Okay, it's going to go up to the right, down to the left. And the way we write that is y or f of x goes to positive infinity as x goes to positive infinity. And f of x or y goes to negative infinity. The function goes down as x goes to negative infinity as we go to the left. Okay, if the leading coefficient is negative, it's going to go in the opposite direction. You're going to have the function going up as you go to the left and down as you go to the right. So the y value is going to go up to positive infinity, your function value, as x goes to negative infinity, as you go to the left. Okay. When we say x goes to positive infinity, that means we're going to the right. And then we look at this on this little, little um, function here. The function value itself, the y value, is going down 
So y goes to negative infinity as x goes to the right, so as x goes to positive infinity. Okay, even degree polynomials, both ends go in the same direction. They're either both going up or they're both going down. If you have a positive coefficient, they're both going up. It's like it's smiling at you. It may have a wiggle in the middle, but it's still like it's smiling at you with that nice positive coefficient. If you have a negative coefficient, it's like it's frowning at you. It may have a wiggle in the middle, but it's frowning at you. All right. What is true about the degree and leading coefficient of the polynomial whose graph is shown? Well, first thing we can do is we can decide whether the degree is even or odd. Okay? Since the two ends are going in the same direction, we know they're even. Okay? That the degree is even. So we can cross out A and B. Now the question is whether the leading coefficient is positive or negative. Since the whole thing overall looks like a frown and both ends are going toward negative infinity in the y direction, that means the leading coefficient is negative. And so the answer is D. So from the graph, f of x goes to negative infinity as x goes to negative infinity, and f of x goes to negative infinity as x goes to positive infinity, so the degree is even and the leading coefficient is negative. Okay, remember, that is the formal way of stating it, but remember, if the, the two ends are going in the same direction, the degree has to be even. If the two ends are going in opposite directions, then the degree would have to be odd. So that's the first thing I always determine. Okay, so I determined that the, the degree was even. And then I looked at it and went, okay, so are both ends going down or are they both going up? So both ends are going down, which makes it look like a frown with a wiggle in the middle, but overall it's a frown. And so that would mean your leading coefficient would have to be negative. If it looked more or less like a smile with both ends going up, then the leading coefficient would be positive. Okay, so to graph polynomial functions, you're going to use the, the end behavior, but you're going to need to make an XY table, and I don't care if you make them horizontally like they do um, in this presentation or if you make them vertically, um, to figure out what's going on in the middle. Because you, remember, you can have all kinds of interesting wiggles in the middle. Now, we're just doing a sketch, so um, we're going to be estimating what's going on in the middle there, but what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate for x values from negative 3 to 3, just using the integers, and so that means we're going to have to plug in and generate our y values. You can either use regular substitution or you can use synthetic substitution. I don't care which one you use. You've got two methods now. And then we're going to use what we know about the end behaviors to, to sketch the ends of the graph. Okay. So first one we're looking at is f of x equals negative x cubed plus x squared plus 3x minus 3. Okay, so we're graphing this first one right here. So we're going to make a table, and we choose the x values, and we're going to choose negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then you've got two choices. You can either do synthetic substitution, or you can use direct substitution, where you take, the, for instance, the negative 3, and you plug it into this function everywhere you see x, and then you simplify. And if you do that, you get 24. Well, that goes off our graph, but that kind of confirms that this is going to go way up here. Then we did the same thing with negative 2. So we plug in negative 2 everywhere we see x, or we use synthetic substitution, and we generate 3. So we plot negative 2, 3. We do the same thing with negative 1, and we get negative 4. So we plot that. And then we do the same thing with 0. We plug in 0 everywhere we see x, and we get negative 3. So we plot that. We do the same thing with 1, and that generates 0. You plot that. Do the same thing with 2, and that generates negative 1. So you plot that. 3 generates negative 12. That's going to be a little bit below what we have on our, our graph paper. And so we plot that. Now we go back and we look and we think to ourselves, okay, this is an odd degree function, so one end will go up and one end will go down with a negative coefficient. The negative coefficient tells me it'll go up to the left, down to the right. So it's going to go up to the left and down to the right, and we kind of keep that in mind. So it goes up to the left, so here we go. We're going to show from this negative 2, 3, we're going to show it going up to the left, which makes sense because it would be going up to negative, I mean, to positive 24 
at x equals negative 3. So that makes sense with what we've already figured out. And then it's going to come down. Um, so here we are at negative 2, 3. Now our next point is negative 1, negative 4. And I want to point out, to get from negative 2, 3 to negative 1, negative 4, we're going to have to cross that x-axis. Anytime you go from positive to negative or negative to positive, here on the y values, you're going to cross the x-axis. You're going to have an x-intercept there. Later on, that's going to be really, really important. Okay, so we come down here to negative 1, negative 4. Now, if you made that the, the minimum value and turned up there, that's fine. Actually, the minimum rel is actually a relative minimum, and we'll talk about that later. It occurs right here. But if you turned there, that would be fine, because then our next point is 0, negative 3. And then we come up to 1, 0. Okay, here actually we don't go from negative to positive, we go to negative to exactly an x-intercept there. Okay, and then we go up a little bit past that, or if you turn there it would be okay because we're just doing sketches. So you go up, up and then we're going to have to turn back down to negative 1, and then we're going to keep on going down, 3, negative 12 would be down here somewhere. Okay, so we've used our table of values. Again, sometimes you're going to be turning. It may be a little bit of a different spot than what is absolutely perfect, but we're just sketching right now. Um, we're going to learn how to find these um, relative minimums and maximums here soon, and we'll be able to graph perfectly. Um, but t for now, we're, we're just worrying about sketches. And let's see if it, like I said, you want to stop and make sure that it agrees with what we know about end behavior. Okay, this is odd degree, so one end should go up, one end should go down, and it's negative, so it should go up to the left, it sure does that, and down to the right. Okay, so now we're going to look at f of x equals 5x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4. It's not shown on the next slide, but we moved on to part b. You can see it on your um, note sheet. And so we're just going to pick this same x values, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3, and you plug it into the function and use direct substitution to generate the values, or you could use synthetic substitution. Now, Looking at this, this is um, an even degree with a positive coefficient. So overall, it should look like it's smiling at us. Both ends, both the left end and the right end, should go up. Okay, Which, if you look, when we plug in negative 3, we get 76. That's definitely up. That's going to be way off our graph paper. So we know at negative 3, it's way up here somewhere. At negative 2, it generates 12. That's still off our graph paper, so still up. Negative 1, 2, okay, we can plot that, so we do. And then we plug in 0, we get 4. We plug in 1, we get 0. And then 2, negative 4. And then 3, 22, which is way up. Um, it goes off our graph paper, but we can indicate to ourselves that, that it's going to go up in that direction, which makes sense because it should go up both to the far left and to the far right. So we plot our points. So here's negative 1, 2, 0, 4, 1, 0, 2, negative 4. And so we come down because, remember, at negative 2 you were at 12. At negative 3 you were up at 76. So we come down and we turn here because after negative 1, 2, we have to go up to 0, 4. Then we have to come down to 1, 0. And then we keep on going. And again, when you're making your sketch, if you actually make the turning point there at 2, negative 4, that's okay. And then at 3, it's at 22. So we know that's way up here because our y value goes from negative to positive. We know we have to cross the x-axis somewhere in there. So there's an x-intercept. We have no clue exactly what the, the value is. We know it's between 2 and 3. But exactly 2 point what, we're not sure. But that's okay. We cross and we head up toward 322. And we double check with our end behavior. The degree's even, the leading coefficient's positive. So f of x goes to infinity, positive infinity, so up as x goes to negative infinity. As we go to the far left, this means up, far left. And f of x goes to positive infinity, so up as x goes to positive infinity as we go to the far right. So the function goes up as we go to the far right. Okay, we've got one um, word problem here just so that you can see that 
these ideas are used in the real world. The energy E in foot-pounds in each square foot of a wave is given by the model E equals 0 0.0029 S to the fourth, where S is the wind speed in knots. We're going to graph the model and use the graph to estimate the wind speed needed to generate a wave with 1,000 foot-pounds of energy per square foot. Okay, so we're going to just use positive values for um, S for the speed because speed is, is positive, it's directionless. Velocity is when you start adding direction. So um, for this one, we use 0, 10, 20, 30, and 40. And we substituted those values in and evaluated. Okay, and so you're going to need to scale your graph appropriately. So we, we plot 0, 0. 10, 29 is going to be barely above 0 because remember this is 1,000, that's 500. So 100 would be about here. So 29 is going to just be barely off the s-axis. At 20, we plot, we approximate 464, which is just below 500. At 30, we do 2,349, which is just a little bit below 2,500. And then 40 would be 7,424. It would be way, way up here. So we just kind of show, okay, we're going in that direction. And then we draw in a smooth curve. Okay. Now, they wanted us to estimate the wind speed that would generate 1,000. Well, if you look over here, the energy at 1,000 foot-pounds would be between 464 and 2,349. Okay, that energy would be right here. So we know it has to be somewhere between 20 and 30. So we come over here. I mean, it's good to start off knowing, okay, it's going to be somewhere in here. What you do is you find the 1,000 on your energy axis. And you come over and you estimate what that drops down to on S. And that's about 24. And so we are going to approximate or estimate that the wind knot, the wind speed needed to generate the wave is about 24 knots, okay, a wave with 1,000 foot-pounds of energy. Okay, guys, thank you so much. That's the end of video two. Go ahead and do your problems to try on your own, and we will go over those in class. Thanks again to Larson Algebra 2 and Hope McDougall and all of their wonderful resources that they provide that make this presentation possible. Okay, guys, see you in class.